wasn't for me, I think we'd go bust. What? If it wasn't for me, you'll come and go bust. Why? I like seeing me on it, no. Did you say you were the star of our channel? Yeah. I'll say at least. But I'd, I'd say you were one of the stars of the channel. No, I take, you've got to take Tyson Fury, David A, all them out of the equation, and I'm the star. <laughs> you reckon? Yeah. Maybe. Right, let's do a thing here now. What we've just been taught by Jimmy Tibbs. Go on. So let's see who, who buckles first. When? No. Yeah. Go on. Now. Ready? What are we going to do? Do the breathing thing. You've got to do it outside fresh air. Why? Just do it now. You can't do it now. You've got to do fresh air. It's deep breathing. You can't just not. You've got to, just, you've got to have Deal. fresh air. Rogan, you go first. Seven. Go on. No, I want to do it at the same time and see who buckles first. Gary. <laughs> yeah, right, okay. Okay, right. We should have done it outside, really. <laughs> oh, really he's not his best, did he? Yeah, he's not Absolutely his best. not. I heard it was a struggle, I heard all the breathing and <coughs> swallowing on. Yeah, sure. Right, go on, carry on. Coon Cassius, Highfield TV, here in Newlands Gym, here in Wickford. With me, I've got European title challenger, soon to be world title challenger. Yeah. Billy Joe Saunders. I said yesterday on Twitter I was going to walk here, because I literally live there. Oh yeah. But I drive here. Yeah. Lazy, isn't it? It's not lazy, because I suppose you've got a bit of red diesel in the range out there, haven't you? Don't put red diesel in that. No? No. Well. Especially from the people you know. Well. And even diesel. All <laughs> 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 um, well. This is the third camp you've set up here. Yeah. Uh, I spoke to uh, your trainer, Jimmy, a little while ago about why you like to take yourself out of the TKO gym. So, tell me why you do. No, listen, CKO Gym is, listen, is, is, is where I was starting my career there. You know, I'm still, I'm still at the TKO as well, but I think when you've got these major fights coming up, listen, I love everybody, you know, Johnny Eames, Barry Smith, you name it, every single one of them down there, all top class coaches and all good people. But it's just sometimes you need to, you know, you need to take yourself out of that equation, you know what I mean? Sometimes you get a bit, bit busy and it's nice to it, it's here, you can register a little bit of work being done. You know what I mean? When you finish a hard session, you know, yeah, but up there you might get the odd person come and have a chat or so, and you know, Jimmy is and he's very strict like that, and yeah, he yeah. goes very strict, so it's more easy for me to say, alright, let's just, let's just go, because you don't hear the end of it. Mm. It's, a, it's a great Jimmy, it's tucked, obviously it's tucked yeah. away, you wouldn't just necessarily just walk past it, or, you know, you have to come into the road to be there, but it's got everything here you need. No, Rolling Lee's Jim, just absolutely, listen, I recommend this Jim. It's one of the best gyms I've trained in because, for one, it was run by you know the two owners, lovely people, lovely family, um, and, and it's, it's our own. When we come in here, we treat it like our own, and that we respect the gym. And uh, as you can see, look at the gym, nice big ring, new bags, everything you want to train is here, and uh, you can't wish for anything better. And you know, I've had I've had a camp, I've had a full camp here before and started a camp here. I started I started about two weeks of the Nick Blackwell fight, here, but I had a full camp here for the. Um, Gerald Fletcher fight, and we all know how I looked on there. Um, and it's going to be the same sort of but, but better, more mature performance again on the 26. Do you know how much they've made you feel at home here? They've actually put a caravan out in the car park. I know, I know. They've had it decorated That's just, for me. Yeah, listen, they've had it decorated how I like it as well. Lee has had it done how I want it. You know what I mean? He's had it all painted out for me. Definitely. So listen, when I finish here, I'll straight up there, up my own there, nice sleep. What what is the theme of that? Lee? It's like a fifties calf, isn't it? Like a American. Yeah. Diner. See, I wanted American it. I wanted it though, Lee, wouldn't it? I wanted it. I saw I wanted it. I wanted it. But he he put that in there with a double meaning to it. Obviously, it's for his granddaughter. But he thought if you was really well, serious about no, it, no, I tell you what, that was the attraction to get me. Here. Yeah, that was the attraction. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But um, like I said. Yeah, we've, you know, you've been here before, so you're familiar with, with everything, and like I said, you come here and train and, and, and go home, and it suits you leading up to this fight on the 26th. Yeah, listen, it's a 25-minute drive, 20-minute drive. Um, nice, easy road, 1, 2, 7, 25, back home, so it's not as if it's stressful going through. It's a nice, steady run in, steady run home. Mm. 
No, it's, it's more important as well. It's like it's, I'm back at home at the house and that now and when I'm in camp. It's just more rest day, you know what I mean? Um, you know, me little boys and that, I love them and that, but you know, I can get a bit of a headache in it when you're making weight and whatever else you're doing. Mm. Um, when I spoke to you, this is about a year ago, I remember asking you a question and I said, uh, this is when Darren Barker hadn't retired and there was that trio of uh, middleweights we had domestically and I said to you, how far do you think you're away from them? And you said to me, not that far behind, uh, but you agreed that you're not quite there yet. Now, is it a completely different story? Now I'm right on the back. I'm ready now for, listen, I'm ready for anything, anyone, anybody now. Frank, after this fight, I'm not looking past this fight. I've got to get this out of the way. There's Martin Mario I'd like to fight. There's, you know, Macklin's out there. There's all, there's all good names. And yeah, listen, I'm not, the real, I'm not calling them out so I want to fight them, but they're, they're good names to fight. You know what I mean? I want to be tested. I want to, I want to put myself up against them and see how good I am. I mean, um, you know, this, this fellow I'm fighting, he hasn't he ain't been out of Italy, only once Germany. But, you know, Murray, he's, he's boxed for a world title. Macklin's boxed for a world title. You know, Darren Barker's now retired. Um, but, yeah, there's, there's, there's plenty out there I want to fight. And that's all I want to fight is the best now. Well, let's prove who the best is in Britain. Then can go and fight for a world title. Mm. 26th of July, uh, you faced the, the unbeaten uh, Blander Mora. Um, what have you seen of him? Uh, I've just seen a little bits on on YouTube. Really, cool. you can't really go a lot on what, what I see of him because he's never he's not gonna he's not faced the opposition like I am. So I know I can't, I can't really read too much into him. He, he's fast. Don't see me punches that hard. But um, you know he, he's got 22 wins, so he's doing something right. Um, but you know we're seeing on the, on the 26. But I can't see anything else but on me. We're good good win. There's been a lot of talk recently over the last few weeks about. Uh, British fighters going over to America and uh, some of them not being prepared to face uh, these top Americans by possibly <coughs> skipping that European level. Now you've done things from, you won the Southern Area title, uh, then you won uh, the Commonwealth title, then you won the British title, now you're going in for the European title. Do you think this run of belts and the, uh, the level of, of opposition that you're facing will put you in good stead Do for... A world title challenge. I, I, I getting back to that question you said. I, I think that, like to me, because I've, I've been with Frank Warren from the start. You know, what I mean, he's, he, he's brought me to my career where I am. So, you know, he's been around the game. A lot of other promoters as well. But where he knows me and he's watched me develop, he knows the level I am. So, perhaps he thinks I'm not ready for world title three or four fights to go, two fights to go. Well, he's Commonwealth. Then he moved me up to the uh, sorry, Southern Era. Then he moved me up to the Commonwealth. Defended it. Then when he thought I was ready for the British, got the British. It's not about winning these titles. It's, it's holding on to them as well, you know. Then he thought, right, well there you go. You, you proved that you're you, you're you're well capable of a British level. Let's push it to European. So now we're test myself at the European level, and if I come through that, he's, you know we're set down. And I'm sure I'll have a big name fight after. If there was, <clears> if there would have been hypothetically the chance of you fighting for a world title before your European title shot, is that something that would have, you would have entered time. Listen, I would have fit for a world title on my first fight. That's all, I, that's all I'm in professional boxing for, is to fight for a world title. But it's, it's, it's what you've got to have, like, you know, trainers like Jimmy and promoters like Frank to look in and, and, and you know, to push you when they think's right. Because every fighter, if you say to any fighter, do you want to do you want to fight Klitschko tomorrow? I'm going to say, yeah, I'll fight anybody, I'm a fighter. But it's where you've got, like, Jimmy and, and, and Frank say, well, listen, we think you're ready for him. Then if you win him, there's your prize, you get him. You know, so it's all steps and stairs. It's all about moving up slowly. Do you blame fighters, though, that take the opportunity uh, when they're either not ready or they're not at that level for going in for world title shots? Not really, Koo, because, you know, when I first started, when I turned pro, I, had a, I was a bit of luck on my side. I went to Olympic Games, come back, got decent good money to start off with, but some fighters don't get that. Some fighters start off from probably two, three, five grand a fight, and... You know that they, they don't get much higher than that. But and when they get a, a world title fight put in the face, and you know it's probably <clears throat> ten times as much they was getting. They don't look. They don't look at. They're only looking at the money. They're not looking at you know the reward. You know, am I ready for this? They, that don't come into their head. They just think, well, oh, nice bit of money. They get in, do the best, and they just come home. 
That's all they do, but it's no good. I, want to, I don't want to do my best, go and get a few quid and just do my best, come home. I want to come home with the title. I'd rather, I'd rather come home being world champion than with the money. Mm. Um, yeah, it's just a, a, an ongoing topic. It, it triggered really from when uh, Brian Rose uh, fought Andrade uh, recently, and um, it sort of came from there, didn't it, really? It's yeah. an ongoing topic over the last few years, but I mean, it's just been brought to attention now well, since Brian Rose fought. I think that there's, there's, there's one, and there's simple, that there's one answer to that. No disrespect to Brian, he's a, he's, a, he's a lovely fella, good father, but is he world title level? Is he, is he, world, is he world level? You know, you put him in and he, he didn't look it. You know what I mean? Am I world level? I don't know. Mm. Put me in, let's see. Could be the same result, don't know. But I'm willing to try and I'm, I'm, I'm willing to come back with the title rather than a few quid. But, you know, he went over there. I don't disrespect any fight. He went over there and he'd give it his all. But this didn't come up. This didn't come up for Trump's on the night. Mm. Um, going back to your fight now on the 26th, uh, you mentioned earlier that uh, Gary Spike O'Sullivan and Nick Blackwell, two of your former opponents yes. actually, uh, that you've already beaten, uh, will help you in preparation for this fight. Well, uh, was the idea behind those two because you've obviously already fought them? No, I mean, listen, you look at it this way. What other two best fighters at middleweight have we got that I can spar? Right, Martin Murray. Is he going to want to, is he going to, want to spar me or am I going to want to spar him? Maybe we could be fighting this year or next year. You know, Nick Blackwell, in my opinion, he'd be British champion when I vacate. Uh, you know, he has John Ryder, but he's a southpaw. You know, and there's just O'Sullivan. He was he was ranked number three with the WBO. Mm. So it makes it makes sense that you know I've I've imported the best I can. One's coming from Ireland, and one's coming from obviously our own country, England, not the Blackpool, is it? So yeah, that's all I can do. But uh, listen, there's one there's, there's Spike O'Sullivan, real strong, good fire, good inside fire. If you want to stand with him. And real strong, don't stop coming. And there's Nick Blackwell, he can have a war and he can box. So I think that this opponent ain't gonna be he ain't gonna be if he is gonna be better than him, he's not gonna be miles better than them, or they could be better than him. There's nothing in that. How long have you been out of the ring for now? Oh I've been out of the ring about seven to eight months now, okay, but September. Mm. September. But you know, a few injuries and that. Hand injuries again, but you know, Hands all right now? Yeah, punching fine with them, to be honest with you. Going back 14 weeks ago, I was in plaster. Now I'm punching the pads, sparring, backing. But I think the, the problem is with me, Coog, I've always, where I've always, um, you know, just wrap up, can't wait to get in there, bang, done. All through my career, it's been like that. Just cut, so eager to get in there, you forget <coughs> about your, your tools, and they're, they're your most important tools. And um, I've neglected them a little bit over the years, but now I'm, like Jimmy's starting to wrap them different. So I'm, I'm doing some more binding and wrapping. And it's just about protecting them, and I think that I'm, I think it's starting to work a bit more because you know we're using different tape and different methods and stuff like that. Mm. So. Do you know as you drive into this road, there's a little billy goat. I know, yeah, I see it so every at day. The end. Is it frightening? No, I don't. I'm used to the billy goats. Are you really? Listen. I name I just, every, every time I look at it, I think of Coogan. Why? I don't know. Just every time I see it, I think of Coogan. Do you laugh to yourself? I don't. I have laughed to myself when I come in. You know the old music playing. You know the, the Bangladeshi music. <laughs> <laughs> you know. You know I'm not Bangladeshi. Don't you? No, no. Do you know what I asked today? I did ask if you was fasting, didn't I? Yeah. But you're not Muslim, yeah? I'm not Muslim. Oh, I've got a lot of friends with Muslim I was talking about a man the other day about his fast inside. Yeah, I can imagine it is. Women, like pregnant women, he said, don't really have to do it. But imagine me having to fast when I wasn't in the gym, <laughs> when I was out of training. I couldn't do it. So fair play to them, they, they put a bit of effort into it. If you weren't a fighter, you'd be fat, wouldn't you? <laughs> if I wasn't a boxer, Coog, I'd probably be in Pentleville by now, <laughs> doing about 25 years. Some sort of arm robbery or, I don't know. I'll be, be doing some serious harm anyway. Okay. You'd be, I'll be it's a great advert out. for the sport, by the way. Well, that's what I'm saying. No, but you have to be fair, you're saying if you weren't in I the am. Listen, listen, I was very wild. Can't grow. Listen, even in the, listen, oh, you learn from your mistakes. In the Olympic Park, I box, and the next, the same night I was out at nightclub and every night in the Olympic Park, do you know what I mean? On the Olympic grounds. Stupid, but if, if I wasn't, if, I, if it wasn't for boxing, I would have 100% be in prison. There's no doubt about it. 
Can I use that as a headline? Yeah. For my video, it's a good headline actually. Yeah. Well, if it yeah. weren't for boxing, I'd be doing arm. I'd be doing 25 years for arm robbery. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, but you can use what you want. It's the truth, probably. Do you know what? I worry about what I'd be doing if I weren't doing this. What do you think, personally, I'd be doing? Because I used to do a bit of action, well, didn't I? Oh, what, 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 <laughs> EastEnders. Why are you laughing? <laughs> Why are you laughing? Why are you laughing? You stand in that. I remember you. You used to stand in that. That leather coat, and you give it all the. Yeah. Was you on the door, the Vic or something? Yeah, yeah. Right? No, not the Vic. They don't have doormen. R and R. That's it. R &R. <laughs> I've been in like nine films. Have you? If you Google me, Coogan Cassis IMDb, you'll see. Oh, what's your IMDb films. about? IMDb is a actors have a, a film page on the internet, and I'm on that. So. I'm dumb bastard. <laughs> yeah, IMDb. That's, that's quite good actually. <laughs> but um, yeah, I wonder what I'd be doing if I wasn't filming. Like complete morons. Like I you. think you'd be probably done for with your camera and that probably paedophilia or <laughs> outside schools with your camera <laughs> in prison. You're probably on the probably same wing. <laughs> dear oh dear, I'm not going to cut any of this interview out today. I'm just going to leave it as in raw. But uh, listen, I'm I getting better with your comments. Interviews. Listen, I'm getting a lot better with your interviews because normally you can't air them. There has been a listen. There has been a couple where I've had to cut. Have you still got them? Probably not, but... You have still got them, mate. Listen, if you want to see it, ask him to put them up. Big, big interviews, big interviews. Scared him, what I said about certain people. But it's just the truth. There were a couple of interviews which weren't suitable for our channel. Let's just leave it there with that. I'm sure if they asked you enough, you'd put it up. No, I don't think I'll probably have it anyway. Do you know what? I think if I weren't doing this, I'd be like a butler for someone. Tommy's butler. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like someone with a little bell. Yeah, yeah. No. Nah, oh, I think no, something along those lines. Or like a, a field raker. They won't have you. Or a gate raker. opener. Maybe. Goat breeder. Goat breeder. One, one of them things. Have you had goat know. curry? Do you know what? I still haven't had it yet. <gasps> you ain't had goat curry? No. No, you lying to me, goat. I haven't. Shut up. The most cherished animal like ever. <laughs> How can I eat it? Seriously, have you had goat? I've curry? never had it. Never. No. Is it? It's oh. not. It's not really. It's, it's a Jamaican dish, isn't it? Listen, yeah, but goat curry's good. Who, who wants goat curry? Go to the town. I've heard. In, town in Hatfield. A little plug there as well for him. But yeah. oh, it's the best. You just go through the town in. It's like the pub thing and sat in the back on the garden bit. Oh, goat curry. You Everything want. all jerk chicken. Anything you want. You want yeah. Oh, and you might. Bump into Dappy there, he's always there as well. Dappy? Yeah. No, 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 no. That guy's yeah, right. I know Dappy yeah, is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Strange you, uh, you mentioned Dappy. He's always there, yeah, he's always Is that the sort of music you listen to? I do listen to it, yeah, he's going to do a ring walk, isn't he? Is he? That's right, yeah. Come in, we're doing all the... He's got about a 15 inch thing, isn't he? Yeah, he's got, yeah. Every time, matter of fact, every time he's there, he's a nice fellow as well, lovely fellow. A good mate of mine, that's cousin. He's got his arms down his trousers, and he's just he's, he's constantly playing with himself. Mm. No wonder why he has stretching out. <laughs> <laughs> he don't, he don't <laughs> done yet. He was doing it. My mate was there, and he was, I see him playing with himself. Yeah, and he went to me, oh, mate, shit me mate's hand. No, no. Yeah. Oh, so just, I, he just got a little. Me. Do you know what? It's a good thing Richard's gone on because I don't think Richard would have liked some of the content within this interview. Listen, if Richard was here, mate, he'd be at the side of you. That's Richard's head there, look all barn, it's not, it's red, yeah? He'd be there looking down at you, waiting, waiting for you to say something, to jump on you. Absolutely. Listen, when you interview me, when you interview me, you're not allowed to mention other promoters. You're not allowed to hardly out of any fault. You just got asked about me and my opponents. Yeah. I know, it's a good thing he's gone home then. It's a good thing. You let, yeah, I'll see you more relaxed now Richard's gone. Always relax when Richard ain't gone. Um, I'm only joking, Rich. All right, well, listen, Bill, thanks for talking to uh, IFL TV. Good to see a bit of your training here, looking very sharp, as you should be, uh, three weeks before the fight. Yeah, still a bit sharper to get, but... A bit over three and a half weeks, isn't it? Yeah, three and a half weeks, so it's a bit of sharpness to get. Probably shave off the last 10, 11 pound and ready to roll. Ready to roll. All right, what are you doing now? Today, now I'm going to have a nice shower, steady ride out. Look at my diet sheet, see what's on it. Okay. And probably go from there. Then rest. Rest. I'm a chicken breeder now.
Oh, I just want to buy a face tomorrow, by the way. Is it? How old are you? I don't want to say. Seriously? 42. Nah, how old are you really? 33. You're old and 33. Good. No, 33, 1981. Seriously. 33, yeah? Happy mm. birthday, mate. Do you want to just add, do you want to end the video and you just send me happy birthday? I'm not Tyson Fury, I can't be sad. I can't mm -hmm. sing like Tyson. Okay. If Tyson's it, I'm sure he will. I'll get him to do it for you. Alright. Late birthday song. Alright. Alright. Thanks for talking to us. Uh, this is Coogan Cassius with Billy Joe Saunders here at Newlands Gym in Wickford in Essex. Thank you very much. Cheers, mate. Best piece of shit I've had in my hand all <laughs>